Joining me again is Josh Burgoyne, local MP at the at Earth Springs and also Shadow Minister for Territory Families in the Northern Territory. Uh, Josh Burgoyne, thank you for your time. The ABC report today, one person after another, uh, only, only one message. The people at this community meeting were white supremacists and racists concerned only with saving white people and whites are the real problem. Now, I don't doubt, you know, you've seen in, the, in any race clash you're going to get it. Tensions do run high on both sides. But does that reflect what really happened last night? Well, firstly, good afternoon, Mr Bolton. Um, it was certainly extraordinarily disappointing this morning to wake up and hear those reports. I was at that meeting yesterday afternoon. What I, what I witnessed was actually a coming together of the community. Like you said, 3,000 people. That's, that's over 10% of our community coming together. There were cars parked for a kilometre away from the convention centre and people walked to get to that meeting. And what it showed was that people in Alice Springs had had enough, they'd had enough of the crime, they'd had enough of, as you spoke about, people not listening to the real issues. And I think it was frustrating this morning to wake up. Um, I, I would like to note that our local, our regional ABC was reporting on exactly what did happen. But then to hear AM actually basically, as you rightly said, only interview what must have been about a dozen people out of the 3,000, um, it certainly didn't show a balanced um, report as to what actually occurred that evening, which was really frustrating as someone that was there that spoke to a lot of people and actually felt a sense of the community coming together on this issue. And I think that's what really disappointed me. It was a real sense of it, the entire community coming together. Yet, um, yeah, those reports certainly painted it in a very different manner. Josh Bergen, um I mean, you, you, you're going around the streets and all that, uh, checking out what's happening. Has Alice Springs got much calmer since the Prime Minister dropped in last Thursday for four hours to fix it? It's been a really interesting um, results. Obviously, when the Prime Minister came into Alice Springs, these alcohol restrictions were put in place. So we are currently on the second day. No alcohol is being served or takeaway alcohol is being served Monday and Tuesday. So tomorrow, um, alcohol will be available again. And we also have, on the 1st of February, a report being handed down both to the federal government and the territory government outlining what should happen going forward. Now, we're all holding out hope that those stronger, future, stronger futures measures that we've spoken about many times on your show will actually be reintroduced, that we will at least have a, a small circuit breaker in this just absolute crisis that we're dealing with. It won't fix everything but it's a damn good place to start. So again, we're, we're really waiting and we're hoping that the Prime Minister's visit last week won't be completely in vain. But unfortunately, as a lot of people have mentioned, he, um, he seems to be more interested with the Australian Open than with the crime crisis that's engulfing Central Australia at the moment. And Josh Burgoyne, uh, you know, the, the, the booze is one thing, right? Uh, and it's important. I'm, I'm not denying that at all. What really upsets me is to see so many underparented children, Aboriginal children, on the streets past midnight, um, some of them full of, of rage or hate or wanting, I don't know what it is, but they need help. And instead I got this, I saw this report today from uh, the federal government suggesting, well, you know, maybe, maybe the way to go is to uh, give people more agency back uh, and, and not remove these children, have us remove them, uh, give more agency to Aboriginal organisations closer to the ground. I didn't see any urgency about saving the children, none. And I think you make a really good point there, Mr Bolt. The number one priority in all of these cases should be that child safety. That should be the number one thing. And unfortunately, in a lot of cases, what we're seeing is that people are more worried about ensuring that that young person stays in an environment that in some, in some cases is more dangerous. We need to make sure that the child's safety is, is the number one priority of governments. And if that means, unfortunately, that you take that young child out of a, a, a terrible environment and place them either with foster carers or in a safe place, then that, that is what has to occur. And it's a really sad situation that we're in here in Alice Springs when we do have young people, some as young as eight, seven, roaming the street of Alice Springs late at night, past midnight. It's simply not a safe place for young people to be. And we really do need to steer this conversation away from just 
investing more money in organisations that unfortunately to date have not been able to show that they can actually deal with these real issues and start to look at what the number one priority should be if a young person is at risk, if they're not in a safe place, then they, they need to make sure that they are taken to a safe place. Josh, this is just so frustrating. These kids should not be on the street at midnight for one more day. There has to be, you know, talk about programs to intervene with bodies closer to the ground. And, oh, my God, we're taking talking years from now, even if it does work. I mean, it's just, it's, it. look, I've been talking about this for years and I see no real commitment here. Josh Bergelin, thank you so much, Dee, for your time. Really appreciate it. Thank you.